55 miles from the Alabama line. Over. Roger. Okay. You're going to need about uh, 68 degrees from me. Real good. Hello everyone, welcome back. This is KJ4YZI, you're watching Ham Radio Concepts, and today we're going to take a look at the brand new ICOM IC705. Love this radio, a lot to learn about it, so we'll have several videos to explain it and show the features. Most importantly, let's get rid of this silly screen protector. Oh, that felt so good. The ICOM 705. And now, here it is, Ham Radio Concepts. Allow me to get this part out of the way, first and foremost on this video before we get into it. To the engineers and the entire team at ICOM, who has spent countless hours of research and development to make radios like this new ICOM 705, the 7300, the 9700, the 7610, and many more from ICOM, I thank you. You've revolutionized the way that I get to operate amateur radio in my life, and it doesn't go unnoticed on my side. So it must be very rewarding to go to bed at night knowing every day that you're working on projects like this. So I thank you. And without further ado, we'll get right into the radio. And looking behind this ICOM 705, you see the 7300 and the 9700. Now, I call these my twins. They're just awesome radios, one of the best radios I've ever owned. And the good thing about this 705 with the other two radios here that you see behind me is the fact that whether you've used the 7300 or 9700 or you've never touched an ICOM before, there's a lot of people that have never used one of these types of radios from ICOM. The beauty behind this is first, this radio is not a brand new radio to learn that you'll have to get familiar with and spend hours in front of the instruction manual just to learn how to use it. Who likes to do that, right? I don't. The fact is, I have not even opened the manual on this radio. Okay, it's still in the box. Because I know this radio here, the 7300 and 9700, I can automatically be familiar with this with the addition of what they've added to this radio like GPS, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi functionality, and more. We're going to talk about this and several other videos to follow. Now, if you've never touched a 7300 or a 9700, and you've never looked at one of these radios, allow me to show you what this radio is about and what it can do. Now, I think personally, we're going to skip a review. You know, I've had some comments that people have said, you know, not much of a review, it sounds like an advertisement. So there's no sense in me putting any of my effort to try to review or, uh, you know, judge anything that ICOM has done with this radio because they know far more than I do about engineering and this type of radio in the market. So that's why I don't go through, is this worth it? Should I buy one of these? Is this a good idea? That's, that's irrelevant at this point. This radio is something that has not been created yet. And I think that there's been a lot of negativity or a lot of un, uneducated out in the market about this radio. So I'm here to give you an overview. If you've never touched this radio before, you have no idea what this is, I'm gonna show you right now, okay? The ICOM 705. The first thing we'll do is we'll turn this off and we'll talk about the radio in itself as a portable ham radio. And to my twins back here, we're gonna shut these off because you're not in the spotlight right now. You're old news, not really. But the 705 is what we're talking about right now. Okay, so the 705 is a five watt or 10 watt HF, VHF, UHF, all mode portable transceiver. Now this can be used on your desk this can be used mobile. This can be used parks on the air, summits on the air, islands on the air, de-expedition, QRP portable. If you put an amp behind it, I guess, sure. But I like the, the challenge and the excitement of QRP. Now, 160 meters through 10 meters on HF, VHF 2 meters, UHF 440, and every mode like FM, AM, CW, digital, D-Star, RIDI, data, uh, and everything you can think of. You know, you can do Winmore, you can do Winlink, you can do uh, 
uh, Packet Communications. You can do Olivia, Contestia, Domino X, Thor, Throb, PSK31, FT8, JT65, JT9, FT4, FT8 call, whatever you want to do. Sideband phone, upper side, lower side, CW, AM, FM, the list goes on. So essentially, it's the same thing as it's everything in my ICOM 7300 and everything except the 1.2 gig from my 9700. Uh, 9, so can you use this on D-Star with a local repeater for 2 meters or 440? Yes. Can you use it D-Star HF? Yes. Can you use it on 10 meters as a beacon? If you want, sure. Can you use it to operate a contest? Yes. 160 meters? Yes. 30 meter digital, yes. 20 meter phone, yes. Six meter AM, sure. Okay, the same screen on this radio appears on the 7300 and 9700. Now don't let the body fool you. This is the same size screen. It just, the body throws it off, makes it look like it's longer or size, you know, whatever. Now, five watts with the battery that goes on the back. and. Surprise, the battery that goes in the back is the same one that will fit on an ID51A, 51A plus 2 handheld. And in fact, this one I think is a little bigger capacity. I think it's uh, a few more milliamp hours. Okay. But this battery right here is 1880 milliamp um, battery, and it will fit on your ID51A. So you can slap it on here like this. Be portable. Now, you want more than 5 watts, you can go to 10 watts by the external DC jack input here. That's also how you charge the battery. But I would use like a BioNO, okay, a 6 amp hour, 12 amp hour BioNO battery, lithium iron phosphate, plugged into here, and you would have 10 watts externally. But then you may say, well, and I've read a lot of comments and a lot of people on the previous video I did, I don't want to carry an extra battery. So why can only do five watts with the battery that's built in or you know attachable? Well, five watts is just plenty for QRP or portable operations. In fact, I sold my Zagu G90 20 watt to Wes, and everybody said, "Why would you do that? Why wouldn't you sell the five watt Zagu radio?" Because I can do it on five watts, and I continue to do it. I like the. X5105 over the G90 anyways with a bigger screen. Of course, that's nothing compared to this. This is far beyond that Zygu. 5 watts can be done. So when someone tells you 5 watts won't work, they're wrong. At the same time, when the solar cycle peaks in a few years, I will use nothing more than 5 watts. Period. The end. I'll be working the world as I did with 20 watts with my G90. With my chameleon on the river, I will be doing it with 5 watts. It's just more rewarding that way to me. You can do it at full legal limit, fine. Now, the radio itself, you know, if you if you look at the size of this radio or feel it, it's, it's a little heavy, but it's not too heavy, okay? It's a portable radio. For what's in this radio, it's not impossible to use this portable. And ICOM does make a specific backpack just for this radio to fit in, and that's a whole other separate topic. So I'm not sure what it weighs, and I don't have a scale, but I'm sure the ICOM specs will tell you how much it weighs. Now, front firing speaker that gets pretty loud. The color touchscreen with the waterfall, everything is touchscreen. I'll show you that in a minute. Your VFO knob, some knobs and but or some buttons here that you're familiar with on other radios like the 9700 or 7300. For instance, this down here is your AF gain, your uh, your audio, or an RF gain, or a squelch. This is your twin band pass filter here for different filter settings and widths, okay? Menu function, quick buttons on the bottom, and some other buttons that we could talk about in a future video because the manual will tell you a lot about that. However, there is a speech processor right here. For the visually impaired hams, yes, you can use just like these two radios, it has a built-in speech synthesizer to read out the frequency and the mode that you're on. So, I always, people always ask about that, okay? Now, um, we're gonna look at the side here. Okay, the side here is your antenna output or input. That's a BNC, okay? A little smaller than an SO239, you can get an adapter. I think BNC is great, it's less loss than an SO239. A lot of small portable QRP antennas have a BNC, okay? Ground screw. So this is interesting because 
my Zagu Chinese radio, I had to figure out to attach a counterpoise to the radio for tuning up my antenna to get it resonant. I had to like unscrew the nut on the SO239 to find a place or unscrew the chassis screw to, you know, put a wire up, excuse me, around it. This is a, a ground screw, very convenient. Now here, this radio here is waterproof. Now I, it's not submersible and I don't know the exact spec of what this thing will take, but it is ruggedized for the elements, parks on the air, search and rescue, summits on the air, and more. Now, there's rubber flaps here that keep these connections from getting, you know, wet or water or dirt in there. Now on the top here, this is your speaker mic connection. And you may say, that looks a little different than any microphone I've ever seen ICOM have here. Well, here is the microphone, which is the HM243 hand mic, okay? It's got up, down, VFO A, VFO B. A uh, clip here that you can clip on your shirt. It's got a soft click PTT button on here, okay? And the thing I like about this, it's got a super long, I mean, super long coiled cord on this thing. So you can really put this in a backpack or on the table there and not have to be right up on it with some short coiled cord. Now, here is the, uh, the two 3.5 millimeter jacks that are on the microphone that go into the speaker and mic jack. And I'm sure ICOM knows much better than you or any of I, or any of you or me, why they did it this way. I'm guessing because they didn't want an 8-pin modular. They, uh, you know, just split it up. So you, basically on one of these, you have your PTT and your up-down controls and then volume or uh, microphone and speaker, uh, and they split it up. So you don't really question ICOM because, again, I'm not interested in trying to figure out why ICOM did anything. They're way beyond me in engineering, so that's what they decided to do and for good cause. Now here on the bottom we have another rubber flap here, and this is your micro SD card. Now the micro SD card will be used for importing stuff for D-Star, like a repeater list for the near repeater function, using GPS in the radio on D-Star to find a repeater that's analog or D-Star near you. And there's a list that's updated that you can download from other people and upload into the radio, or recording transmitted and received audio onto the SD card that you could play back or remove, put in your computer and make your own YouTube videos so that you can show people what the audio really sounds like when you're making those rare contacts, okay? Now on this side, DC barrel jack here, again, it comes with the cord. The cord has raw ends on the end, marked positive and negative. So you can plug it into a DC power supply or a charge controller off your solar panel uh, to charge it at 12 volts. Um, that's here and you could also operate it again you know maybe crimp some anderson power poles on it plug it in you got a bio no attached to it you're at 10 watts now another rubber flap up here this one is your send and alc up top and a tuner jack right below it all 3.5 millimeter uh jacks here let's see if we can see that there you go now why and then this is another controversy why did they not include an internal tuner? And that's a sore subject for a lot of people. But for me, it means nothing because I don't use internal antenna tuners on my radios. If I do, it's a rare instance. But I use, for instance, when I go out this weekend and play with this thing and make some contacts, I'm using my Chameleon F-Loop magnetic loop antenna in which I dial in and make resonant right on the antenna for a one-to-one -one match for most efficiency. I don't need a tuner in this. Okay, so if I do need a tuner, well, I can use an outboard one or something, or you can use the tune, you know, the tuner that's paired with this through that tuner accessory jack, and then as you tune through the radio, it will activate the remote tuner. But I'm not interested in that. But for a lot of people, that's a deal breaker, and I don't see why because I've made contacts all over the world with antennas that are resonant without a tuner, and that's just what I do, and I don't need to lug around a tuner. So. Don't tune up a 19 to 1 SWR and expect 5 watts to talk across the world, okay? <clears throat> now over here, another rubber flap. We have a uh, keyer jack here. See if we can see that there. For a little 3.5 millimeter keyer and a micro USB. We'll talk about the micro USB and the functionality in future videos. Last thing I can tell you is, if you look at the bottom here, there is a standard camera mount screw here. And that will fit on my Chameleon P-Loop tripod. 
It'll fit on the Sony tripod that's holding my camera that I'm recording with now. I can take my satellite tracker off that tripod and screw this on. I can get a tabletop Amazon $5 tripod with the standard camera mount, screw it on, put it here, and have it sitting off the ground or off my table for ease of use or whatever. But that's just another feature that I find interesting, that I have a way to mount or prop the radio without having to leave it on the table like this if I wanted to. So that's the body of the radio, and let's turn it on and just show you around real quick as if you had never seen a 705 before or a 7300 or 9700 for that matter, and why this radio is just so fun to use and to look at. Okay, so everything is stock in the radio for the settings, the waterfall and everything else, but let's, let's, let's talk about this as if this was a new radio you've never seen before, okay? So what you're looking at is a nice color, color touchscreen display here. It shows you your frequency, a spectrum scope, a waterfall, you know, your S meter, and some other information. Now, if I were to get asked questions, Eric, how do I change the frequency? Well, very simple. You can tap right on the screen and choose which band you want to be in. And check this out, FM radio, air band. Um, to be, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not sure what the other two functions are. I haven't looked in the manual at all but I'll probably figure that out. But look, 160 meters all the way to 70 centimeters. Just by tapping it, puts you in that frequency, okay? So we'll go back to 40 meters here real quick. I don't even know what antenna I have connected at the moment. So looking, okay, so Eric, well, of course, you know, you can tune around and you can see that the waterfall gives you an idea of where signals are. You see them on the spectral, you know, spectrum scope and the waterfall is where the received signals are. If I was asked, Eric, how do I change the mode? I don't want to be in lower sideband. I want to be in CW. Okay, no problem. You tap it. And I'm on an angle here, so it's hard to tap. Right here, here's your modes. Sideband, CW, FM, RIDI, AM, wide FM for those VHF, UHF modes. Data, DV for D-Star. You want to be in D-Star on 40 meters? There it is. Okay. You want to be in CW? There it is. Pretty easy, right? Eric, how do I change the filtering? You think this is a very easy radio to use, you know, easy to use radio. So where's the filtering? Very simple. You click on filter up here, one, two, three, right? I could tune the band pass this way, you know, shift it to get rid of QRM. I can hold this. I can go up into the filtering there. That's it. I mean, look how easy that is to get to. The filtering, the bandwidth, you know, everything. All right? So. Eric, how do I get the scope back? Very simple, menu, scope. Eric, I want to see an audio waveform of my transmitted signal and the received audio. Sure, audio. Now, none of this is set up. I don't have anything set up for the filtering or the, the time or whatever. I guess I could change that like this. Like that, you know, I could do that. But you see, I already know how to walk through this thing because I'm familiar with the other two radios that are very similar. Okay, Eric. How do I get back to the full screen waterfall? No problem. Scope, right? Make it small, make it big. What about the menu? You want menu, you want an easy to use menu. Okay, menu, right? You've never seen one before. So you have stuff for your key or for CW mode. You have stuff for, you know, meter. You want your, your multifunction meter. It shows you everything. Power output, signal received, S meter, ALC, compression, SWR, current. Voltage, temperature, shows you everything right here in a glimpse, a glimpse, you know. Go back to scope here. What about the meter up here? Well, it's power output. You tap on it. It's SWR. You tap on it. It's ALC. You tap on it. It's compression. I mean, very, very simple to use, you know. Another multi. How do I change the power level? Push the multi button in. RF power. Look. I think adjust your power there. Now, you notice it says 50%. That's on battery. Now, if you were to plug in to the side and be on 10 watts, you'd have 100% power. Key speed for your keyer, okay? Everything is very easy to get to. What about functions like set functions, right? Tone control. Tone control on receive or transmit. Tone control transmit on AM. Bass and treble, you know? All kinds of stuff, you know, sideband, you want. I mean, all kinds of stuff here, all right? And I know I sound like a broken record, and you may say, you know, this sounds like an advertisement. 
I'm excited for this radio. I really am. I'm excited that I'm going to have the opportunity as a ham to use something like this. And it's not for everybody, and you may not want it. Don't tell me I'm wrong. Don't tell me I'm an idiot. Just say it's not for you. That's all, because there's plenty of people that are going to have this radio. I know Richard want, wants one. Actually, Richard and Jim want one, but uh, they're getting one soon. So there's another menu in here. If you go in the menu, look, you have a one and a two on the bottom. How about this, right? Digital for your D-Star capabilities. You know, your gateway settings, your DV memories, GPS. How about picture? Yes. Check out my video on the 9700 when I was sending pictures over D-Star to David uh, and uh, digital data. Send pictures while you're talking on D-Star. It's a cool feature. You could put them on the SD card, upload them from your computer, connect your computer to it on USB, you know, uh, Load the pictures in, send them as you're talking. Yeah, here's the way my shack looks right now. And as you're talking, this thing's drawing on the screen. I mean, that is neat. That really is neat. Can that be done on HF? I don't know. Just thought about that. D-Star on HF with picture messaging? I don't know. So, other stuff here. You know, it's a lot in here. There's a lot of stuff in here. You want to set up your, you know, uh, record. If you wanted to record your... Uh, you know, record your, your transmitted audio, your receive audio. Do you want to record a uh, CQ, CQ? Because you don't want to talk all the time. You want to have a key here. Okay, watch this. Go here to the phone. Get out a picture message there. Okay, we're on lower sideband. We'll go to menu, voice. There's eight positions for voice transmit that you can record. You can record them CQ, CQ, calling CQ. This is Kilo Juliet 4, Yankee, Zulu, India. Here is KJ4YZI Mobile in Florida calling CQ and standing by. I can record that, okay? And then it'll play it over and over and over again. Features everywhere. You don't need to consider this video as what all features this radio does, but I'm just showing you around the features of what this radio does, okay? Now, a couple of things I want to show you real quick because these are going to be in the future videos. So we'll go to set here, and I'm going to go to... Right here, menu three. Now this is other videos. Bluetooth, use a Bluetooth headset, uh, you know, in your vehicle if you want to use this mobile. How about the audit, the uh, icon Bluetooth headset for out in the field? You're at parks on the air, you're at summits on the air, you're at field day, and you, you want to, you know, you don't want to have big headphones on. You don't want people to be hearing you and all your static you're listening to. Bluetooth, right? How about wireless LAN? What would we need Wi-Fi on this radio for? I think this is like the first radio I know of from a major manufacturer that has Wi-Fi on it. And if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. Um, the GPS is built in, as I said, and uh, some other stuff. You know, cloning, everything is in here. So we're going to talk about some of the other features, such as setting your scope up for, you know, I have, if you look at this radio back here, I'll turn this one back on. I have the scope set up a little bit differently here on the back, you know, the green with the black fill and different, you know, uh, I don't have any antenna hooked to this one at the moment. And I have this one over here set to orange or I did, I reset it for an update. So I'll show you settings on adjusting your scope, but look at this, the scope again, we're looking at this and saying, wow, there's stations up here. You could tap right on the screen and go right to that frequency. Okay. So yeah, I see something here. Watch. There it is. I'm on that signal. Okay. That's the joy of a waterfall spectrograph, uh, you know, touchscreen is that you can find other signals like that and you can tap on it and right there you are on that station. Now, some people, again, the shirts we've had, don't be a scope head, call CQ. If I go here to 14 megahertz, 10, we're going to turn the reference down. It's a little hot. Okay, it's safe to assume that I have maybe something right here, someone up here talking. But if I go through the scope like this and I see nothing, that's, the, you know, for those who are new to the radio hobby, that's what's called a scope head. Uh, I don't know what antenna I'm plugged into right now, but if I were to go like this and say, wow, there's, oh, there's one station, there it is, right there. But I hear nothing. The bands must be dead. No, it doesn't work that way. But a scope on a radio like this makes it that much more enjoyable. And when you see a scope like this on field day or on a D-Expedition, 
really amps you up when you see how many thousands of stations are on a contest and how many aren't there when the contest is over. Okay. But anyways, the ICOM 705. Here's your challenge. Your challenge is this. In the next couple days, I want to see in the comments what you want to see or know about it. What do you want to see about this radio that you're interested in? I don't want you to ask, prove to you why it's a good radio, or see how the build quality is, or take it apart, or tell me why I need to use a resonant antenna. Tell me something you want to see. Is there a feature I'm not explaining because it's new to me? Let's find out together. Let's do this together on the video, leave comments, and I'll try to see the most popular comments. Maybe I'll make a couple videos and talk about those before the weekend. It's over. 7-3, everybody. More videos on the way. KJ4, YZI.